So today I'm going to talk to you about holotomography and the use in live uh, label-free cell imaging. Um, and I would like to start this talk with some background. Uh, there's always been uh, a continuous search for contrast through the history of microscopy. And a big step was made with the introduction of fluorescence microscopy. However, this came at a cost of accepting the altered physiology of the cells as labels have been added. This is also associated with phototoxicity in live cells. So these are some of the difficulties regarding 3D cell, cell imaging, complex sample preparation, the issue of phototoxicity, uh, the fact that it's largely qualitative and not quantitative. And another issue is the time taken for acquisition. So quantitative phase imaging or short QPI is now an established label free imaging modality, which provides the superior contrast without the use of any labels or high illumination radiation to excite the fluorophores. While providing this contrast without the toxicity, most of the current commercial QPI technologies are limited to, to 2D imaging. Thermocube has taken QPI to 3D imaging through a technique called holotomography. So using the Tomocube microscope, a true 3D image of the cell is generated, crucially without the use of any labeling. Looking at the top left, we can slide through the Z-plane of this 3D image. In the big panel, the contrast in the image is provided by the refractive index of the cell compartments. We can then assign the color to specific bands of refractive index to highlight different compartments of the cell and visualize it in 3D. As I mentioned before, this technique is more than qualitative, it is also quantitative. This is achieved using refractive index measurements of the cell's component. The software is, that, software is then able to output measurements like volume, surface, dry mass, and so on. So these are some of the advantages of holotomography. First of all, you don't need to label the samples at all because holotomography detects the illumination of light. Also, this has a fast acquisition process with a speed of, of up to 2.5 frames per second for 3D and 150 frames per second for 2D images. There is a resolution of up to 110 nanometers on lateral axis, and all these are achieved with a low phototoxicity. So what is holotomography? HD is a form of QPI. The principle is to detect uh, the changes in the phase of light as the light passes through the material, or in our case, the cell. A, a hol holography is achieved using the amplitude and the phase. However, a single hologram only provides a 2D image. So in order to generate a 3D image, we rotate the light beam around the specimen as a CT scanner, the light path itself is not moving around the sample as a CT scanner, but the light is reflected in a manner that covers 360 degrees of the cell. And this is done using a technology patented, patented by Tomocube called Digital Micromirror Device. This allows the microscope to produce CT-like images by controlling the laser angle and rotation. The DMD allows us to cover 360 degrees by taking 448 images with no mechanical movement. So the absence of moving parts allows for fast imaging with high resolution. So the model that I will talk about today is the HD2H and it includes fluorescence imaging and these are some of the specifications of the system. The fine refractive index measurements are acquired using 60 times water lenses with an NA of 1.2. The maximum field of view is 80 microns with a depth of 40 microns. And this is the most popular setup of our system. And now going beyond the field of view, as mentioned, we were limited by the size of field of view. And this was overcome by the use of a stitching functionality. This offers real 3D data sets of a bigger field of view. The image quality and measurements remain as accurate as a single field of view. As we can see with these primary cortical neurons, when we zoom in, this allows us to view the whole area in 3D. And when we zoom in, we don't lose any details. 
as seen in this cropped image. It is worth mentioning here that this is done in a label-free manner using just the intrinsic refractive index information of the sample itself. So the presence of fluorescence capability on HT2H microscopes. It is important to remember that the specificity of labeling organelles with fluorophores is still important. Therefore, on the HT2H microscopes, we, we have incorporated correlative fluorescence capabilities. What sets the TomoQ microscope apart from our competitors is that we generate bo both 3D QPI and 3D fluorescence data. And this is made possible by taking fluorescent Z slices and applying a deconvolution algorithm. As such, we can output true 3D phase and 3D fluorescence correlative images. In this example, the mitotracker fluorescent signal overlays with the intracellular features of the HT images. And we are able to visualize it in 3D as seen on the right video over here. So some images candidates and applications with HD microscopes. So let's have a look at some of the some of some example example images uh, taken with HT2H. As you can see, we can cover a wide variety of mammalian cell lines. And due to the resolution of the microscope, we can also image smaller specimens such as bacteria and yeast. During bacterial cell, cell division, we can also observe refractive index detail within the cell, thanks to the, re, the high resolution. Also looking at microorganisms such as uh, yeast, we can clearly identify the vacuole department as seen in the 3D rendering on the right side. Fast acquisition allows us to observe detail of the mitosis process, in particular, the alignment of the chromosomes uh, along the mitotic spindle. Nanoparticles have a distinct refractive index and therefore we can visualize them easily. Furthermore, we can trace these nanoparticles in a 3D volume all without using labels. As seen on the right panel, the nanoparticles ha has been assigned to a red pseudo color based solely on the refractive index. So time lapses of primary cortical neurons can also be imaged with the HT microscope as seen in this video. But imaging speed can be appreciated with the time lapses like this one, where we can see the fluctuations of the cell membrane. Also, we can see the events within the cell. Like on the cell on the right, we will see the mitosis in the rounded cell that is going to happen about now. We can see the spindle formation and the mitosis. And if that acquisition time is pushed to, to the limit, as in this case, we can see the movement within the cell. So in this case, the high refractive index dots are lipid droplets. And because it's measuring the refractive index at each voxel, we can render it in 3D as a time lapse, as in here. One exciting assay that I would like to touch on uh, that was explored in a label-free setting on the HT2H is the CAR T-cell assay. Here we can observe the, the interaction of the CAR T-cell inducing apoptosis in a cancer B-cell, and we can see the blabbing of the cancer cell as it happens. Sorry, Daniel, just one more minute if that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, this is going to be the last one. So oh, okay. using machine learning, uh, it was possible to identify CAR T cell and the cancer, the cancer cell. Furthermore, the synapse between these two cells was also identified. So the video on the video shows the formation of an active synapse between these two cells. As we have a through 3D data set, we can focus just on the synapse formation, which we can see on the bottom right. So what's happening on the left, we can see the 3D image and the green interaction is the synapse that we see on the bottom right. And I'd like to thank you all for the time and please do not hesitate to contact me uh, or go to check and uh, check out our website where we have a list of published papers uh, that used our HT microscope. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Daniel, and um, uh, thank you for keeping to time. I, I was uh, just conscious that we're near the end of the session, so we didn't want to overrun too much. Um, that was a great talk. Thank you. Um, so we did have a, a question which you did answer in your talk, but maybe you can reiterate it. Um, Paul Vicada 
um, just said, um, how long does it acquire to image such a 3D series? You did answer it in your talk, but maybe you want to highlight it again because it's quite a quick technique, right? Yeah, so the maximum time would be not 0.4, the, the quickest is going to be not 0.4 seconds for a 3D image in HD. That's so really, really itself. fast. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, and another question came up saying, um, have you ever done this kind of imaging with plant cells? So we do have some applications for plant cells. The, it's again, it's, it's down to the, the thickness of the cells and so on. So we cannot do um, tissues, for example, or we can do just a few layers of tissue with the um, fluorescence of the plants. We might be just the outer fluorescence of the chloroplast. That, that's another issue with, with the plants. But yeah, we do have some applications for that as well. Okay, that's cool. That was from Sayala Bakora. Um, and we have another question from Michael Schwertner, who's from Lincoln. He says, uh, very impressive speed for 3D. You say you have no moving parts. What are the limiting factors for the speed? Well, we just need, because we don't have any moving parts, but we still have uh, the, the light path itself. Uh, and we need to, because we're using such a low uh, power, on the laser we don't want to if you increase that it's going to be damaging to the life cell so we keep that to a minimum okay so it's sort of a trade-off between speed and yeah. photo damage yeah okay yeah. okay understood um and from abhijit da um is it possible to monitor the bud scars of yeast scale, yeast cells using uh, label free microscopy i am not sure I could check with the science with our science team if they did it before. I know there's some work on the uh, yeast, but I'm not sure about the, the scars though. Okay, okay. So maybe um, you can uh, contact each other through the chat window, or um, Abhijit, maybe you can email Daniel um, yep. and and ask him the questions, and he can ask his technical team for you. Um, so um, uh, Robert Hartley. Um, he's asking, what is the maximum Z range you can achieve? Uh, 40 microns. 40 microns. Okay, so it's mainly for thin thin yeah. specimens. So I guess that's why the plants cause a, a problem because yeah. everything's thick and very aberrating as well. 